So, I just turned 25. Yeah, and I have been compensating myself for that fact pretty heavily since since my birthday by purchasing books, um, mostly thrifting up to this point, but I definitely have acquired a desired dopamine, you know, calm the things that ensue when you turn 25 by buying books. And I decided that I wanted to do more of that today with you. I just got off work and the sun is still out, which is just the best thing in the whole world. And my roommate and I are about to go to one, maybe two local bookstores that I just, that I love. She's mostly just accompanying me because I have a problem. I'm only letting myself buy a few books and then I will give you guys a haul of what I end up getting and also just kind of show you what else I've gotten <laughs> over the last, at this point, like two ish weeks it's a lot again i've thrifted most of them but i have like my mind set on a couple of books because since i've been thrifting all of the books i've been accumulating i love thrifting don't get me wrong but when you're thrifting books obviously you are limited to what people have donated obviously but i love the feeling of going to an actual bookstore that has huge selection and getting to pick like books that have been on my radar that i'm actively seeking out instead of just like seeing what gems i can uncover both amazingly fun hobbies just very unique and i wanted to give myself the opportunity to go get a couple new books so that's what this is <laughs> yeah i'm really excited i think it's gonna be cute and cozy and we'll probably be there while the sun is going down which is fun the two bookstores that i have in mind are super close to each other they're both like locally owned bookstores we have the ripped bodice primarily like a romance bookstore it's so cute in there and so fun i've only been once so i'm very excited to go again and then if we have enough time before it's fully dark or we get tired of book shopping or whatever it is we're gonna go to village well which is the bookstore right down the street so just i'm just very excited so anyways let's go have a cute cozy fun evening and bookshop it's a different day basically the night that i went to rip bodice with mad we got there at about like 6 36 40 and then we walked in and realized that they were closing at 7 p.m so we were really only in there for about 20 minutes i did get a book but i didn't get to do like extensive browsing and then when we walked out i looked up village well we were planning on going there next and they closed at six so somehow i had it in my brain that both of these places were open until eight and that was just not the case not the case at all but i wanted to i wanted to complete the mission i wanted to do what i set out to do and get a book from village well as well so it's actually 
morning time currently. I have about like 30, 40 minutes before I need to leave to go do something for work. But I figured I'd have a little browse this morning. They have a cafe inside, so I might get a coffee as well. I have a little bit of a morning before I start my work day. And I wanted to bring you guys with me, obviously, because I said we were going to Village Well, and I'm following through on that. So I'm a little bit nervous because since it's the morning time and there's a cafe in there, I feel like there's a good chance it's going to be busy. I'm by myself this time, so it's like more intimidating to just like break out the camera in front of random people. So we'll see. I want to try and find Powerless by Lauren Roberts, like I said. And if I can't, that's okay. If they don't have it, that's okay. I looked online recently and it said they had one copy and that's a popular book. So we'll see. Anyways, okay, let's go ahead and go inside and do a little bit more bookshop. a few books. I've acquired a few books over the last couple of weeks. Oh, and another one. I just realized I didn't even put it in there. This is humiliating. <laughs> okay, I'm racing against the clock right now because the sun is currently going down and I want to try and finish filming this while I still have daylight in here. We'll see if I can get it done. I'm like really not sure. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna try our best. I'm gonna try and be concise. So it's not an outrageous amount of books. It's just kind of crazy that only one of these was a gift. <laughs> the rest I did buy for myself in the name of my birthday, which is just kind of, it's just, it's just, you get it. You get it. It just makes me laugh that like every time I was like out and about in the last couple of weeks, if I saw a book that I wanted, I was like, my birthday. Regardless, regardless of the amount of rationalizing and excuse making that was behind these purchases, I did make them. So let's go ahead and talk through them. I think I'm gonna talk through the ones I thrifted first and then talk about the ones that are like new books and my one gifted book. So the first book, I technically thrifted it. I didn't spend any money on it, which is just... I had to include it in the haul because it still joined my book collection over the last couple weeks. Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. I actually found this in a little free library in my neighborhood when I was on a walk like a couple days ago. It is like a brand new, it actually wouldn't surprise me if like the owner of the little free library, like of the house, purchased this and stocked it because it literally feels brand new unopened, which is crazy. But if you haven't heard of Lessons in Chemistry, basically it's like a historical literary fiction novel to my understanding. It was actually recently adapted into a TV show I think for one of the streaming services with Brie Larson in it and I want to watch it but I kind of want to read the book first so I was planning on buying it. It doesn't really 100% feel like something that's like in my comfort zone. It's again historical fiction. I think it's set in the 1960s. Yeah set in the 1960s. It basically follows a woman named Elizabeth Zott who has her own like cooking show but she's a chemist I think. What is she? Lessons in chemistry. She's a chemist and so like the way that she hosts her cooking show and the way that she runs it, she like uses a lot of like scientific terms and is kind of like educating the female population that would be the ones watching the cooking show in this day and age and kind of like revolutionizing in a way. So it's just like a very interesting premise. I know it's supposed to be like witty and funny and very feminist, obviously. I'm very interested to get to this and see how I feel about it. Cause again, historical fiction, not 100% my thing, but I think I will end up really enjoying this. And also it was free, so. Book number one. <laughs> Bride just sitting on the bed behind me. Okay, book number two is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune, which I actually thrifted at my favorite nearby thrift store that always has an insanely stocked book section. Like I can usually find at least like one or two gems hidden away. This one is like a little bit, it's a little bit beat up, like just the corners like folded down, but it actually is originally from Village Well. 
love her. And this is actually a book that's on my 24 books in 2024 list. So I wanted to get a physical copy of this anyways, which you'll see is kind of a recurring theme in this video. And it's one of those things where I'm kind of taking a risk with reading it. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to be obsessed with it because I feel like I've heard very like mixed things. You either really like like the cozy sweet vibes or it's just like not 100% your thing. And I'm not sure where I'm going to land. It's one of those things where I was like, if I end up falling in love with it, I'm willing to spend the money to replace this copy for one that's like new. Anyways. I really don't know much about the plot. Honestly, it's really as somebody that likes to go in blind I feel like I say I don't know much about the plot a lot. I almost never know stuff about the plot I still have to give the the disclaimer every time <laughs> from what I know I think this is categorized as a cozy fantasy I think and I think we follow yes we follow our main character Linus Baker who is a by-the-book caseworker in the department in charge of magical youth and basically he is sent to this house to kind of like investigate or like observe these children that live there that have magical abilities and I think it ends up just being an overall like really sweet sound family kind of vibe which is really cute I don't think it's high stakes at all I think the magic is very much like a coming of age thing rather than like a magic thing if you know what I mean and also the little blurb on the front is V.E. Schwab and it says I loved it it's like being wrapped up in a big gay blanket simply perfect so I don't know I'm really really excited to get to it I'm so excited that I found it at the thrift store because again I was gonna have to buy it anyways and I just also the spine like those colors it's just it's just so good and I'm really excited so book number two book number three is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern which has been on my radar genuinely since I was like on tumblr in middle school like this is one of those that I've always heard about I literally don't know the specifics of the plot actually at all I know it's fantasy I know it's low stakes fantasy like kind of like no plot just vibe I'm really I'm really throwing I just threw out low stakes I don't actually know if that's true but I know the no plot just vibes really is everyone is just like always raving on about Erin Morgenstern's writing and I actually also own the Starless Sea by her and it's actually on my March TBR I've always referenced the Night Circus when I'm talking about the Starless Sea anytime I've talked about it in any of my TBR videos so like this is one that I have wanted to get to for so long and I'm so curious to see if I'm obsessed with it the way people were on tumblr back in the day all I know, genuinely, is that it is about a circus that arrives at night. That's all I got. I think it's an adult fantasy with a romance subplot. And this is genuinely me guessing. So yeah, anyways, book number three. <laughs> book number four, I think I thrifted actually a little bit before my birthday. This is another one that like doesn't technically count, but I'm gonna throw it in here because I've added it to my collection. And now I'm like considering it something that I bought myself for my birthday. It's Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This is another one that has been adapted. I'm pretty sure it's a, an Apple TV show, I think. And I have heard incredible things about it. Again, not super sure on the plot, but I know that it is like a dystopian. I'm pretty Pretty sure it's like literary fiction adjacent dystopian minimal plot like almost like slice of life For somebody that lives in a dystopian future I think it's like post plague or something like that it's set 20 years post devastating flu pandemic so <laughs> I think it's like dual timeline it depicts life before and after events of the situation that happens in the book and it's very much like dystopian vibes in the future it's described on the back like blurbed on the back as darkly lyrical dot 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 a truly haunting book one that is hard to put down this is one that I have had on my radar for a while but it's also one that I don't know exactly when I'm gonna be in the mood to pick up I just really really wanted to buy a book the day that I was at the thrift store and I found this so I got it <laughs> it's one that I will pick up when I'm really in the mood to like use my brain you know what I mean because it obviously is not escapist in the way that most books are and that is what I love the most about reading but like every once in a while I feel like I like the feeling of being challenged a bit so I don't know, we'll see okay and then the last book that I thrifted is Illumine by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff this is a huge book I literally only know about it because of Heather because she read it and she really really enjoyed it what I know it is a young adult like almost like sci-fi dystopia situation yes it's set in 25 75 in space I think I think it's set in space not sure but I do know the two main characters Katie and Ezra literally break up at the start of the book and then are forced into a basic situation where they have to work together which is just like a really interesting premise and setup for a relationship dynamic that's going to control the story I was very intrigued by that when I read the description and then also it is very much like mixed media there's all kinds of things all throughout the book there's like emails and documents and all sorts of things and I think it's kind of like if I remember correctly you are kind of putting the pieces together for some kind of like whistleblowing secret exposing situation alongside the main characters like you're finding out the information with them in real time in the format that they are receiving it it just seems super interesting super different like unlike anything I've ever read before also the cover is just really cool 
So very excited about this one. And it's also another one that's like in pristine condition. So love that. <laughs> then I got one physical book as a gift. I actually just got it this morning. One of my friends dropped off presents for me and my roommate. She got me One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which I have not read any of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books outside of the Famous Four series. Love the Famous Four series. I know I love her writing. So I'm really excited to read this. I also just every once in a while, you just crave like a really solid contemporary romance that is very likely to make you cry. And from what I know about this, it will. So thank you so much, Erin. Thank you. <laughs> and now the three that I bought from my little local bookstore. So first of all, from The Ripped Bodice, I bought The Unmaking of June Farrow by Adrian Young. I am so, so excited to read this. I think the first person to talk about it that I saw on booktube was Haley Pham. And just the way that she described the plot of this, I was like, that is my perfect book. Basically it involves time travel. It's like magical realism, romance, mystery. Like it's got everything. And I just, everything about it sounds amazing. I literally suggested to my book club that we read it like two months ago when it was my month to pick. But I gave us like multiple options and we ended up picking something different. I would love to get to this like literally tomorrow. I think that there's a chance that I could really, really love this book. It's really based on just purely vibes. Also the cover, again, just so pretty. I think it follows June Farrow, main character June Farrow. She's always been told that like her family, the women in her family are cursed. And when she starts hearing voices, she embarks on like a time travel journey to like basically figure out the mystery and the truth behind the family curse and like undo it. And then there is a romance that unfolds, I think, as she is traveling through time or whatever it is that she's doing to solve this mystery. So one thing about me, I love a time travel romance. About Time is my favorite movie of all time. So if this is anything like that, I will be eating it up. Okay, and then I actually just realized like when I sat down to film this that I had forgotten that I purchased this for myself. So I actually bought the paperback version of Happy Place by Emily Henry when I was at Village Well like two weeks ago, I think, a week and a half ago. I had already actually purchased a book from Village Well for myself in the name of my birthday. So <laughs> moving on from that, I just was so excited when I saw it and realized that it had come out in paperback. I don't know where I've been. I thought that we were still waiting for that to happen. I saw like one promotional TikTok from somebody that works in publishing being like sneak peek of the paperback and I saw that it had the yellow spine, which I will say not the biggest fan of. The original hardback cover, if you're unfamiliar, is pink. And as much as I love the way that this matches my other books, my other Emily Henry books lined up, I do miss the pop of pink. So. I will be intrigued to see what color the funny story spine is when it comes out. I hope that it's like a bright, because it's like purple, the cover is purple, so I'm wondering maybe it will be pink on the side. I don't know. Happy Place is one of my favorite books of all time. I love it so much. I read it for the first time last summer. It is a contemporary rom-com slash rom-drom. It takes place in Maine. It is a friend group slash trip out to the beach house that they take a trip to every summer. And um, our main characters are pretending to still be engaged for the sake of their friends. They broke up, didn't tell anyone, go on this trip, one last hurrah with their friend group are lying to everyone. It's ju it's just so good. I've talked about it so many times. I just, I really strongly encourage you to read it if you have it. Like six stars. So had to get it. I had to get it in paperback. If there's one thing I don't need, it's multiple copies of the same book. I needed this, okay? I needed it. Okay, and then lastly, today, as you saw at Village Well, I bought Powerless by Lauren Roberts, which if you're unfamiliar, is a YA fantasy dystopian enemies to lovers situation. The way I have seen people become absolutely obsessed with this is crazy. One, because one of my friends, not to put her on blast, read this like very early on when it was like first gaining popularity and she did not like it at all. Like she actually really, really hated it. So I had gotten that review from her and then all of a sudden she was everywhere. She was everywhere and people were obsessed with her. And I was like, wait, I'm so confused. <laughs> I think to be fair, I think my friend did read an early version of this because she bought like the first like indie published. Actually, I'm pretty sure Lauren Roberts like, self published it. So I think it's gone through another round of edits, maybe like grammatical type stuff since it was picked up by an official publisher. I just think it's so funny that early on I heard conflicting reviews and now I've heard literally nothing but glowing positive reviews. I've heard that it is a mix or she even like cites this in her acknowledgements that it's kind of like a mix of Red Queen and Hunger Games. And from what I've heard, she kind of like has, like picked out the best parts of each of those stories and kind of put her own spin on it. I don't know how I'm gonna feel about that because I used to be obsessed with the Red Queen so I know that plot very well. And then The Hunger Games is one of my favorite series of all time. So I don't know if it's gonna like bother me or if I'm really gonna enjoy reading those stories in 
another format. We'll just have to find out. But I do love that this is her debut. I'm really excited to have bought this to actually like support her and her overall book sales because I think it's so, so cool to have a debut that's done this well. And yeah, I'm really, really excited about this. This is another one that's on my 24 books in 2024, which I don't think I said this. So is The Unmaking of June Vero. So I have three books I was gonna have to buy anyways. And I just treated myself to them and I'm really excited. So yeah, anyways, that's Powerless. I'm gonna try and get to her sooner rather than later so I can have an opinion, so yeah. Okay, that's it. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm so excited about almost every single one of them. As you know, Station Eleven, I'm a little bit unsure. Re, City Destroyed by Flu for obvious reasons. But overall, I am like so thrilled with this. You know, there's just really something about the dopamine from literally just browsing in a bookstore and the dopamine from moving forward with purchasing books from said bookstore. Just, it's just unmatched. It's unmatched. That is actually it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for entertaining my birthday month mindset and keeping me company while I gathered more books than I know what to do with. I highly recommend if you're ever in the Culver City area, if you're visiting Los Angeles for whatever reason, to check out The Ripped Bodice and Village Well because they're both incredible stores, locally run, so much fun. Highly recommend visiting them if you ever have the chance. So that's, that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.